and brought it back from the dead. But is T-Max 3200 worth the price? I wanted to do some more film comparisons to Tri-X like I began earlier in the year. But to keep things consistent, rather than do them every now and then, I went ahead and got 49 different film stocks, everything I could get in 35mm from B&H and Freestyle. So unless they were out of stock, I got a roll of it. Now if this part of the video seems familiar, it's because I'm using this portion of the video for all 49 of them rather than record it 49 times. So if you want to skip ahead to the H and D curves or the prints, time codes are right over here. For those of you that haven't seen this part of the video before, here's what I've done. So I wanted to use each film with the exact same shot, which is a headshot of me with a Kodak Gray Card Plus, which happens to have a red, blue, and green patch, a cyan, magenta, yellow patch, and then a dark and a neutral flesh tone. Then, with those shots taken, I bracketed every shot in third of a stop so that we can make sure we have a negative of equal shadow density to the base target film of Tri-X. Now, the reason I use Tri-X is because it's just been around for a long time and it's a very popular film. So it's a good base film to compare everything to. Then, once everything was developed, which was developed in D76 at stock for the manufacturer's recommended time, I printed everything on Ilford using the exact same aperture, contrast settings, developer, and everything. The only thing I changed was my exposure time, and that was to make sure that I compensated for any base fog variation from one film stock to another. Other than that, everything was left the same so that we can have a comparison of just the qualities of the film. Now there's going to be some uh, differences in contrast, especially on the high end, and that's because the manufacturers getting their development time may not have used the same target that Kodak used for Tri-X, and that's okay. We're not looking at the overall contrast for everything. What we're really looking at is grain characteristics, uh, tonality, how the film treats the shadows versus the highlights, that sort of thing, and uh, we're looking at spectral sensitivity, thus the gray card plus, rather than just a regular gray card. So we're going to go ahead and look at H and D curves, which if you saw one of my earlier videos on sensitometry, I like to use pen and paper and make my graphs. However, my wife was really, really ready to make sure I was done with this project. So she put everything into a spreadsheet for you all. So even though I don't like them, I wanna show them to you thanks to her. Then we're going to go ahead and look at the prints side by side with the same print made from Tri-X. And from there, you can decide if you like the film and if you wanna go and use it. So let's go ahead and take a look at the curves and then we'll go to the prints. Here we have the Tri-X represented by our blue line, our T-Max 3200 represented by the red line. Again, much like the other T-Max films, we have a fantastic straight line response. In this case, it almost looks like the Tri-X film flipped. In that regard, what I mean is we can see that where the Tri-X has a valley, the T-Max has a peak, and vice versa. But overall, still a very, very straight line, very little deviation. The toe down in the low values separates pretty much immediately. However, the toe might actually be flatter, but because of its speed, uh, we couldn't really cut the light down enough to get the very, very low values to flatten out on this step tablet. So we might actually have already started slightly higher than the flat toe of this film. It's entirely possible. But once we get to the actual prints, we'll see if we have any true um, shadow separation at those low values. But otherwise, another excellent performance turned out by another 
fantastic T-Max film. So let's look at the prints and see what we get. Here we have Tri-X and our T-Max 3200. Now we can immediately see the graininess. We'll zoom in in a moment and look at that closer. But let's look at some of the overall characteristics first before we get that much close into it. Just like our other T-Max films, we can see that our spectral sensitivity is different than Tri-X. So here, again, we have left column pretty evenly dark all the way down, right column evenly mid-tone. Here we have a lighter yellow patch, a lighter green patch, slightly darker blue patch. We have seen that with both T-Max 100 and T-Max 400. Now, exposure-wise, so we can tell from this portion and this portion of our highlights that this is overdeveloped. However, this is not the 3200 exposure. This is the uh, exposure index of 2000. Now the interesting thing, if you look at the package of 3200 speed T-Max, it does not say it is an ISO 3200 speed film. It says it's an EI, or Exposure Index 3200 film. It's actually a much slower film. Some people feel that it's more of an 800, some feel it's a 1000, some feel it's a 1200 speed film. I'm getting 2000 uh, in order to have the same shadow density, particularly through this area, which is what I paid most attention to when comparing to the Tri-X. So, since this is technically overexposed for the development time that was used, which was the 3200 speed development time, this and this may be a result of overdevelopment because it's technically overexposed. So the highlights obviously aren't going to match, but uh, that could be adjusted through the development time. Now, overall tonality and just uh, having the uh, ability to control your tones, it's not bad. Now, I realize looking at my monitor may look a little different in the uh, post-editing once I actually get to that portion. This looks almost blown out on my monitor that I'm looking at right now, but actually looking at the print, I definitely see smooth gradation uh, going from this portion to here and over, and I'm not getting any blank white. So uh, hopefully that comes through on your screen, uh, but I do see that in person, even though my monitor up here that I'm looking at doesn't show it. So uh, same with the shirt. I'm getting nice separation between the shirt and the border, but again, your screen may not show that. Um, that depends, of course, on the contrast settings of your screen and so on. All right, let's go ahead and zoom in and take a closer look at the fine details here. All right, in media comparison, we can clearly see the grain difference between Tri-X 400 and the T-Max 3200. The grain here, quite large, the edges still very sharp. Now. Bear in mind, developer has a lot to do with that, whether it's a high acutens, a solvent uh, developer, or any of the other variations out there. Overall, it's still pretty sharp grain, and it has a nice appearance. So shadow detail, again, it's pretty close to the Tri-X, but as I said, I chose a negative that had the exposure pretty much equivalent. Here we can see we are losing some of that fine detail along the shoulder against the background that we have with the Tri-X. That is probably due to the fact that the grain is obscuring that detail and not necessarily uh, less sharp. In this side-by-side -side comparison, we can see we still have the stitching of the shirt visible here. We still have the ribs of the collar visible. What we do have obscured because of the large grain is 
the hair in my Adam's apple is not quite as clear because the grain is pretty much mixing in with that so that the hair and the grain are virtually indistinguishable. And then looking at the gradation on the skin, here in this shot, uh, we can see a little bit better gradation in that forehead, now that we're uh, zoomed in quite a bit, and uh, here along the bridge of the nose, it's a little bit better. Now, does it look a touch like a drawing uh, because of that large grain? Maybe a little bit, so a bit of a uh, artistic interpretation, if you would like to think of it that way. But we still have pretty good detail in the hair of my sideburn beard area. Eyebrows, eyelids, you can see the pores of my skin still, so it's not obscuring to that point. But it is definitely grainier. Overall, however, pretty good performance, especially for a 3200. Do I feel we are getting a 3200 performance out of it? No, you're going to lose shadow detail if you try to get in that high of an ISO. But 2000, we're only talking two thirds of a stop, more exposure. Overall though, it's still a really good film. So if you need the extra speed, then I would recommend it over trying to push a lower speed film like Tri-X, T-Max, HP5, because you are going to get a little bit better speed performance, but still have some good shadow detail that you probably lose pushing a, f a much lower speed film that high. All right, well, that's it for today. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe, and we will see you next time.